Friends, welcome to morning prayer for Tuesday, October 5th. Glad to get to pray together, even if I'm a little out of sync with all of you or we're all out of sync together. Still grateful for the liturgy that carries us along as we get to pray. Well, the link is in the description of the video to our liturgy if you want to follow along that way. Otherwise, obviously, I invite you to pray along with me. Let's go ahead and begin. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Come, let us adore him. Our ambitiatory psalm from Psalm 100 today. Shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. Know that the Lord is God. It is he who made us, and we are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. For the Lord is good, and his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations. And our psalm that we're spending time with this week, or at least Monday through Wednesday, is from Psalm 112. Praise the Lord. Blessed are those who fear the Lord, who find great delight in his commands. Their children will be mighty in the land. The generation of the upright will be blessed. Wealth and riches are in their houses, and their righteousness endures forever. Even in darkness, light dawns for the upright. For those who are gracious and compassionate and righteous, good will come to those who are generous and lend freely, who conduct their affairs with justice. Surely the righteous will never be shaken. They will be remembered forever. They will have no fear of bad news. Their hearts are steadfast, trusting in the Lord. Their hearts are secure. They will have no fear. In the end, they will look in triumph on their foes. They have freely scattered their gifts to the poor. Their righteousness endures forever. Their horn will be lifted high in honor. The wicked will see and be vexed. They will gnash their teeth and waste away. The longings of the wicked will come to nothing. I love that line. They have freely scattered their gifts to the poor. Maybe much like God does for us. We can respond, glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our New Testament reading, since we don't have Eucharist today, our Tuesday morning prayer, we'll use our New Testament reading, continues in 1 Corinthians chapter 7. So yesterday, we read Paul's instruction, his pastoral instruction, really, to the church about the sexual relationship uh, between husband and wife. Then he continues, I'm picking up where we left off, in verse 10 of chapter 7. To the married, I give this command. Not I, Paul says, but the Lord. A wife must not separate from her husband. But if she does, she must remain unmarried, or else be reconciled to her husband. And a husband must not divorce his wife. To the rest I say this, I, not the Lord. If any brother has a wife who is not a believer and she is willing to live with him, he must not divorce her. And if a woman has a husband who is not a believer and he is willing to live with her, she must not divorce him. For the unbelieving husband has been sanctified through his wife, and the unbelieving wife has been sanctified through her believing husband. Otherwise your children would be unclean, but as it is, they are holy. But if the unbeliever leaves, let it be so. The brother or the sister is not bound in such circumstances. God has called us to live in peace. How do you know, wife, whether you will save your husband? Or how do you know, husband, whether you will save your wife? This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I find Paul's instruction there. Paul's teaching, not the Lord's, as he says multiple times in this passage rather mysterious in the saving of the unbelieving husbands and wives, how God works in the midst of our myriad situations. But I think the confidence that Paul gives us is that God is 
at work and will be at work, and that's certainly something to hold on to. Friends, let's pray together. Lord God, almighty and everlasting Father, you have brought us in safety to this new day. Preserve us with your mighty power, that we may not fall into sin nor be overcome by adversity, and in all we do, direct us to the fulfilling of your purpose. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. On this day that the Lord has made, we pray for our day and its tasks, the world and its needs, for the church and her life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who are sick in body, mind, or spirit. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all who are in the midst of famine or disaster. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for victims of abuse and violence, racism and prejudice. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who are bereaved. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who work in the medical and healing professions. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Thank you that you hear our prayers. Be near to these and all people because of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Would you join me in praying the Lord's Prayer? Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our debts, as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Well, friends, thanks for joining me today for morning prayer. Let me extend this blessing to you as you go. May the God of hope fill us with all joy and peace in believing through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And may the peace of Christ be with all of you. If you're watching this live-ish at 9 a.m., encourage you to pop in the chat there and pass your peace if you're able, or pass the peace to someone you're with or someone you see throughout today. And the peace of Christ be with all of you, and I'll be back live tomorrow morning at 9 a.m.